What is our series called? Yes. Why is it called that? That's the word it's supposed to go in very nicely. Dating, love, marriage, sex. Uh huh. What did we talk about two weeks ago? Love, dating. Dating. What did we talk about last week? Love. What are we talking about this week? No. We're talking about Jedi. No, I'm yes. All right. We are talking about marriage. All right. What did you guys learn about love last week? Uh, love is not a thing you want. <laughs> not a thing you want. Go ahead. It's not a feeling. It's a healthy, healthy commitment. It's if you support each other. It's a healthy commitment. It's a healthy commitment. It's a healthy commitment. Excellent. Excellent. Lainey, what were you going to say? I was going to say feelings don't Remember the analogy we used? The food analogy? Who remembers that one? Go, me. I do. Yeah. She can go. Okay. Right, 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 right. So love comes with feelings, but feelings are not love. Just like food comes with smell, but the smell is not the food. How many of you ever gone, I'm full? No one. Oh, Oh, yeah. All right. Tonight, we're discussing the topic of marriage. So think of it this way. Two weeks ago, we talked about building healthy relationships. We talked about building healthy relationships. We talked about... Last week, we talked about there's one of those relationships in your life that's kind of sticking out and you think, I want to get to know this person, I want to get to know this guy, I want to get to know this girl better. And that deepens into something else to where you come to a point where I'm like ready to make a commitment. This is over years of time, though. I'm ready to make a commitment to this person. What comes next? Marriage. Okay, so in your imaginary mind, not your real mind, but your imaginary mind, you imagine the person that you've met And you come to a point where you're like, I love this person, I want to commit to this person, and you're ready for marriage. When was the first marriage ceremony? When was the first marriage ceremony? Okay, in the galaxy far, far away? Yes. First marriage. Oh, oh, oh. oh. What? The church in God. Actually, that hasn't happened yet. Oh, yes. Adam and Eve. Now. Who was the pastor at their wedding? God. Okay, very nice. Very nice. All right. In your notes, or if you have a Bible, or if you have a Bible app, I will allow that. Just don't get distracted. Turn to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. This is after the creation of the world. This is after the creation of man. This is after man has spent who knows how much time naming the animals. This is still while well, everything is perfect. There's no sin. There's no evil. There's no wickedness. Genesis 2. I want somebody to read and everyone else listen to verses 18 through 25. Oh, Aaron, go for it. Um, then the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a, I will make him a helper for him. Helper for him. Now out, now out of the ground the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was his name. The man gave names to all livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not a found, there was not found, yeah, there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and whilst he slept, took one of his ribs and closed it up, and closed its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone, is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. Awesome. Thank you. Very good reading, by the way. Very good reading. I like that. All right. Group time. This is what we're going to do. You're going to get together in groups of three, and you're going to read this passage, and you're going to find observations about marriage. Okay? So, leaders, you are encouraged to get with a group and kind of help guide them. Brad, you might want to get over here with Molary and Curly. And uh, get together. I'm going to give you just a few minutes. You can stay in your chairs. Groups of three. Observations on marriage. Go. I'm 
sorry, what? Yeah, you, you join them. Just Genesis 2, 18 to 25. Observations on marriage. Isha. Yeah, Isha. And for man is Ish. Ish. Man is Ish. What's Sean sound like? That's a good question. I have to look that up. But it has. I think. I think it is connected with the with the because she was taken out of man. So it might be like out of, kind of like Moses is drawn out of. I'd have to look that up to be sure though. But Ish and Isha. Actually, if you look, most languages. It's really interesting. Most languages, the words for the man and woman are very very similar. Not French? Not French? I don't know French. Oh, really? Ombre and Ombra. Really? Proud, <laughs> yeah. proud. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's very appropriate. Adam and Eve get divorced. What's that? Adam and Eve get divorced. No. No. There were no divorce trains. <laughs> They've got the best one right now. Awesome. So, I was about ready to give them, give them one. I, I, I never saw it. It was all you. It was, you forgot me. I thought I got you. Hey, Rodney was like, pen. So, this is a teacher. And, and, and Ryan can, Ryan, 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 Ryan can override this one. Ooh. So, it's not good that man should be alone. And out of all the pieces that he already created, he couldn't find a helper. So, could we say that you know, Eve was tailor-made, perfectly Whoa! Perfect. No, I'd support that, for sure. So, Eve was made specifically... Eve was the Isha to his Ish. So, she's his lackey. So, his... She's his lackey. He was created <laughs> Two minutes, people! Okay, 
What? <laughs> this is why they're the upperclassmen and women. From the Hebrew words for, for, for man and woman? From the Hebrew words for man and woman? Ah! <laughs> One thing I did notice I was reading um, today is that God created Adam out of the Adama. And I didn't make a connection until I was reading it and people was like, oh, oh, ah! <laughs> yes! There's your connection, yes. Yes, yes. The funny one, with, the funny one with um, with the woman is the plural because it's not the way that normal plural uh, nouns go. It's it's a weird one. Yeah, I can't forget what it is. It's inashim, inashim, I think, or something like that. Yeah, it's weird. All right, all right, back to seats, back to seats. Check out the camera. For your boy. <laughs> For your boy. All right. For your boy. We're Rodney, not going to spend boy. the whole lot of time. The, the right, one right, and only, right. Rodney. Hey. Oh. oh, I'm going to allow you. Go sit down. Oh, wait, not you. Yeah, go sit down. That was clever. All right. All right, we had, wait. We had four groups or five groups? Should we have five groups? One, two. I think we five, five groups. Okay, so, so. I want to hear one observation from each group. One. Pick one. One. And two. And one, two, and two. Everything else was made of dirt, but Eve was made of ribs. Oh. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't control it. Uh, it's not good that man should be able to make a helper for him. So women, women, women. Let's do it. Nice. Nice. Laney. Let's do it, Nate. Okay, okay, so man and woman, there's a link even in the name. This group over here. I'm pointing at Jasmine. She said that woman was called woman because she was taken from man. So y'all's observation. Oh, that should become one flesh. Nice. And then uh, 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 here, here, and Trent. Oh, yeah. What? They should always respect each other. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. Good. Good. All right. You got chatterboxes tonight. Everybody take a take a, take a, take a deep breath. Thank you. All right. Very good observations. None of you got any of the observations that I had, but that's okay. Very good observations. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you three things. Three things that I found from this passage. Number one, marriage was instituted by God. What does that mean? He created. He created. Marriage was created by God. Marriage was founded by God. God was the one who said, hey, we're going to do this thing called marriage. Number two, marriage is the closest of all human relationships. So close that Eve was literally made of the same stuff as Adam. That's not up here. That's not up here. I'm just telling you these things. Marriage is the closest of all human relationships. I'm going to get into this a little bit later, okay? Number three, marriage is monogamous. What does that mean? Only one person. What? Only one person. And you know how I know that? Ask, how do you know that? Well, let me ask you a question. How many Eves did God create for Adam? How many Adams did God create for Eve? One. Okay. Zero. God didn't create Adam for Eve. He created it goes vice versa. It goes vice versa. Marriage is monogamous. All right, here's your point. Are you ready? This is the longest point that I've ever put together. Marriage is a monogamous union between one man and one woman instituted by God and meant for life. I'll say that again. 
Marriage is a monogamous, yes, I did spell that correctly, union between one man and one woman instituted by God and meant for life. Somebody else say it. Matthew, marriage is marriage. What? What is marriage? Marriage is the union of. Well, oh, not just the union. Monogamous union. Monogamous union between one man and one woman. All right. All right. Marriage is. By the way, there'll be time for question and answer afterward. Marriage is the closest of all human relationships meant between one man and one woman, monogamous, monogamous union, forever. So, let's go back. Go back to your imaginations now. You've been building healthy relationships. You met that special someone that you believe is somebody you believe is somebody you could commit to. You come to a point in your life where you believe this is the person that you are going to marry. Now, a couple things I want to just ask. Before marriage, is it okay to move in together? No. Why not? Temptation. Temptation. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. No. Temptation. What if, what if, what if, what if, wait, wait, wait. What if the guy and the girl decide we want to give living together a try before we get married, so we're going to move in and the guy's going to sleep on the couch? No. Okay. Okay. Why not? What? Guys, guys. What if they want to chill on the couch and you're sleeping? Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Next week we're going to talk about sex. So the same. Hey, I know. Act like you're 17, 18 for just a second, okay? Next week we're going to talk about sex. So I'm going to save all that conversation for next week. But I do want to answer one thing. Did you guys know that statistics show that when a man and woman move in together before marriage, they are more likely to get divorced? Really? More likely to get divorced. It's a true, true thing. Moving in together. So listen, you guys have heard the whole, the whole thing, you know, you, you test drive the car before you buy it. Yeah. That is not, everybody say not. Not. A principle you apply to marriage. When you're buying a used car, yes. When you're marrying a used per when you're marrying a person, no. no. Yeah. Marriage is a house without a back door. You enter. That's the, that's how you get in. You, there is no going out the back door. When you live together, it's, it creates a back door that you can leave. It sets you up for I'm done with this. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, guys, bring it down, bring it down, bring it down, okay, okay. Guys, somebody asked me, when do you get married? Okay, timing is different for people. Timing is different for people, okay? I told you, was it, did I tell the breakout guys or did I tell all of you last week that, all of us last week that we, Heather and I waited till after school, did I tell I said that to everybody. Okay, I said that to everybody. So Heather and I waited until after school. Now, that's not, there's no formula for this. It's not like when you meet each other, you need to date for two years and then you can get married. That, there's no formula to timing. Timing depends on the couple. It depends on the people around you, the trusted godly people who say this is a good thing. It depends on what's going on. There's no timing, okay? Some people have gotten, have met, fallen in love, and gotten married in just a mere weeks or months. Actually, do you guys know who Michael W. Smith is? Yeah. He, he's, a, he's a popular Christian artist. I do not recommend this, okay? It worked for him, but I do not recommend this. He was in his office one day. I read this in his, 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 uh, his book. He was in his office one day. He saw a girl walk by his office, picked up the phone, called his mom, and said, I just saw the girl I'm going to marry. Really? Really. Went and followed her to the bathroom, waited outside, <laughs> waited, till she came out and introduced himself. Three months later, they're married, and they're still married today. Now, that, that happens... Don't. Look at me. That happens this amount of times. Yes. I did not know that. That happens this amount of time. Okay. Just admit that happens this amount of time. Okay. Most of the time, you meet, you take time, you get to know each other, you learn each other, you get married. Okay. How long did you guys date? Two years. Two years. Okay. How long did you guys date? Fifteen months. Okay. Cool. Cool. 
Me. Oh, yeah. I told you. Four years, okay? Four years, okay? Timing is different for different people. The point is you need to work towards what the marriage is going to look like, okay? Guys, we work towards what the marriage is going to look like. Now, we touched on this last week, but in your notes is Ephesians 5. I want to read this again. Ready? Listen to me as I read. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way... Husbands should love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, as Christ does the church. Because we are members of his body, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Now, I told you last week, the way a marriage works is with submission and sacrifice. The Bible talks about the wife submitting to the husband and the husband sacrificing for the wife, okay? Now, ladies, submit here does not mean you give up everything about yourself. Submit, shh, guys. Submit here is not about making yourself a slave or a doormat. It's not about you getting rid of your opinions or getting rid of your preferences or becoming this person that isn't a person at all. That's not what the submission that's talking about here. The submission that it's talking about here is recognizing your husband's authority in the home. That's why I told you girls last week that when you're falling in love with a guy or you think you may have, you, you ask yourself the question, can I submit to this person? If the answer is no, do not marry him. If the answer is maybe, see where the relationship goes. If the answer is yes, then you might be ready for the marriage. Guys, when you're ready to sacrifice your time your money, your energy, and everything to protect and love this woman, that is when you know that you're ready to commit to her. Now, the man is the leader of the home, but he does not lead with an iron fist. He leads lovingly and kindly and gently and respectfully and tenderly. He leads, yes, but he leads carefully, very carefully. Girls, if you marry a godly man, you will have an easier marriage, not an easy marriage, because there's no such thing, but an easier. Guys, if you marry a godly woman, you will have an easier time of leading her. Not an easy time, because there's no easy marriage, but an easier time. If you marry someone who's foolish, or girls, if you mar marry someone who dominates, you're going to end up with broken hearts. And I don't want that for you. I want you in a marriage relationship that is awesome. And the way to get there is to marry somebody who's got it. Let me tell you what this looks like, okay? This, this whole leader submit thing. Let me tell you what this looks like. Today, something significant happened in the Jackson family. We put our house on the market. Woo! We're selling it and we're moving to Mexico. No, we're not. We're just moving closer to town. Don't worry, I'm not leaving. We're selling our home. Now, Heather and I came to this decision together. If I had come to her with a decision saying, hey, I think we need to sell our home, and she was hesitant, I would not have moved forward. The reason is because we came to this choice together. I listened to her. She listens to me. We made, Even though, technically, I would have the right to say, woman, we're doing this. That's not the way to lead a marriage. It's not respectful. It's not loving. It's not kindly. So we would, it did actually happen that way. Actually, it was her idea first. And then I was like... Cool, yeah. So, but just say it happened that way. If For me to lead her, I lead her by listening and we work it through together. Have I ever had to put my foot down? Somebody ask that. Have you ever said that? Yes. Yeah. Because this is what it means. We come to a decision that needs to be made. We're both on different pages. According to scripture, I do have the authority in my home. But let me tell you something. You listen? It's been very rare. Very rare. And you know why? Because I married a godly woman. I married a godly woman. Nine times out of ten, we are on the same page. And when we're not on the same page, it either means we need to pray about this more, get some more advice, or it means that I, I as the man, need to make the decision humbly by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not an easy thing. 
But that's the way God has set it up. Now, I don't want to paint for you that we've had a perfect marriage. Heaven, I'm not. A, there's no such thing as a perfect marriage. All marriages fight and argue and bicker and have bad days. Every single marriage is like that. Christian and non-Christian. But submitting to the Lordship of Christ, we do have a pretty good marriage. In fact, we're best friends. We've been together for 15 years. We're best friends. And let me tell you this, guys, girls, listen to me. If you cannot look at the person that you think you're going to marry someday and they're not your best friend, don't marry them. If you are growing in a relationship with somebody and you think this is the person I might want to marry, but they're not your best friend, don't marry them. I'm not saying you can't have other best friends. You know, you can have like, you know, girls have girlfriends, guys have guy friends, and you know, have, whatever. But you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's good to actually be best friends. It's actually, I would say it's actually essential in our day and age. I know we talked about how things happened a long time ago. Different start, different topic. One last thing I want to leave you. We've been going kind of long. So one last thing I want to leave you. Anyone in here 19? Anyone in here 18? 17. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. There's no rush. There's no rush. We talked about marriage is a commitment for life. Don't rush it. There's no reason for you to turn 18 and turn around and get married. Does that work for some people? Yes. But don't rush it. Okay? Don't rush it. What is marriage? A monogamous union between God and God and for life. Very good. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for marriage. Marriage is a gift from you, and we want to praise you and thank you for that. We want to thank you for what you've taught us today. There's so much more to this topic. We could take weeks talking about marriage, but this is a good overview. And I want to thank you for your gift to, to men and to women and this awesome relationship that you created. God, I pray for each guy and girl sitting in this room right now. I know that you have mates for them. Maybe, perhaps somebody in this room will stay single, and if that is the way it is, then praise the Lord, and may they worship you in their singleness. But God, we want, we want to thank you and praise you. I just ask you to give us wisdom for the future. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Gentlemen. <laughs> Gentlemen. Let's go that way. Hey, this is not the WWE. No, it is not. No, no, it is not. Afterward.